Hello people, welcome to your medical physics channel. Today is a very special day because we start today a great series named Radiation Physics and Dosimetry. And the topic today is what is radiation? So let's start. First of all, you can see in the image anatomic nucleus. So you can see the protons and the neutrons and you can see an alpha particle over there and another here, a very energetic photon, so a gamma ray and some electromagnetic waves of maybe of low energy here. So let's go into deep right now. What is radiation? As you can see in any dictionary, Radiation is the emission of energy as electromagnetic waves or as moving particles. You can see this phenomena in the image, but we can uh, break down this idea in three parts. So we have a source, in this case is the atomic nucleus. Later on, we can put on the beam. The being in this case is the electromagnetic waves or the particles. And another important thing is the material. So the material have very different behavior with different kind of radiations. A very common example of radiation is the radiation of the sun, the sun rays. So in our way to understand, so the source is the sun, the sun rays are the beam, and for example, the material could be a plant, as you can see here, or a human, as our friend is there. The sun rays are very important because we need sun rays for food, for photosynthesis, and for our skin because uh, we produce uh, vitamin D with the sun rays. But the sun rays are very dangerous too. If you don't have a measure, it could give you cancer. So. You have to be careful with the sun rays. And as you can see in this graph, the sun rays includes the visible light that is useful for your journey. Uh, some infrared rays is important for James Bond and that kind of detectives and spies. So, but another important is the uh, ultraviolet rays because uh, some of them are important to react with your skin to produce uh, vitamin D and for the excess of this ultraviolet uh, rise gives you a stochastic probability to to have cancer. Okay, talking about another kind of radiation, very common, very useful. So radio waves are a kind of electromagnetic waves that are useful for communication. And as you can see in the image, so the source is the antenna, the beam are the electromagnetic waves, and the materials are everything. So the walls, the people, the air. So the electromagnetic waves are transported everywhere. One kind of electromagnetic waves is 5G. 5G in these times is very controversial, but the technology is a little bit simple because it's an electromagnetic wave with a specific frequency. It's a high frequency related with other technologies like 4G, 3G or television. So this frequency is around microwave and has the same properties of all electromagnetic waves is non-ionizing radiation, but its frequency gives an special polarization properties that are related with the power of 
penetration. So we need more 5G antennas per square meter than 4G antennas because the frequency of 4G antennas is lower so that electromagnetic waves goes further and doesn't break into the walls and are more penetrating but 5G is not so penetrating because of his high frequency that is the only property but it's not dangerous have this in mind 5G is not the apocalypse and is not the cause of coronavirus okay as you can see in this graph electromagnetic waves are very useful because uh, radio waves or uh, low frequency waves are very useful for communication, television, microwave, radar waves, and 5G, so on, as you can see in these another images. All the communications are in this rank of frequencies from gigahertz around this, this number, not this. You can see giga is 10 at 9. Here we have 10 and 10. For this line is the 2G and 3G technologies and 5G is a little bit bigger like for here 10 at 10 and a little bit more maybe here. So the lines, the spectra of these technologies are very close, are from here to here. So this graph is logarithmic. The difference between this point and this point is uh, very high. In this graph, you can see only in a very thin line. You can see the energy of the photons of this kind of radiation and it's very low. It's around 10 at minus 5 or 10 at minus 4 electron volts. It's an energy very small, so it can't cause any problem in the health. And Another kind of uh, radiation are uh, infrared radiation. So the visible light, everything that you can see is this, in this line, ultraviolet and X-rays. Here are depicted in these uh, lines, but to be rigorous, the X-rays, they don't have a finite line in this graph. So you can produce X-rays of a very high energy if you want so this band could be bigger than gamma rays so here gamma rays are from this point to this but the only difference between x-rays and gamma rays are the origin so x-rays are produced in the electronic cloud of the atom and gamma rays are produced in the nucleus of the atom that is the only difference and the most common gamma rays are about 100 kilo electron volts or 1000 kilo electron volts is not so much and with x-rays you can produce artificially x-rays of about 25 mega electron volt or more so if you don't understand these quantities the electron volts i'm going to do another video explaining this but right now you can understand electron volt as a quantity of energy very useful in the atomic and subatomic world so, we are going to see another kind of radiation applications. In this slide you can see a LINAC, linear accelerator. A linear accelerator is a way to produce X-ray artificially. So, we use some mechanism to accelerate the particles. And the particles are used mainly for medical applications. Radiation therapy is a very common application to linear accelerators. So these uh, kind of elements are named medical linear accelerators. In this case, our passion is Omero. So, but if you produce very high energy particles, you have two ways to apply the high energy particles. In this case, the electron directly to the patient or the X-rays as well and the X-rays are very easy to produce if you have high energy electrons. In simple words, you only need a metal plate to collide the electrons and after that you easily have X-rays. In this case, our patient receives not high energy particles, so she receives X-rays. Another kind of radiation, a little bit simpler, are the X-rays of low energy. To produce this kind of X-rays, you don't need a linear accelerator. You only need a X-ray tube. 
And the next right tube is a very simple machine. You only need a metal plate to collide electrons and a potential difference to accelerate a little bit the electrons. In this case, the material is not only the patient. We can have a material, special material named detector. The detector has the properties that if the X-ray beam or if the radiation interacts with it, you can register, you can visualize, you can have the information of how many interactions are there so you can detect. The X-ray and the electromagnetic waves are invisible. Your eyes normally can't perceive the mass of the spectra of electromagnetic waves. You can listen to the electromagnetic waves. You can't feel the particles. You can't smell the radiation. So you need a detector to know if there are radiation over there. As I have shown at the beginning, the nucleus could be a source of radiation. In this case, I'm showing the effect of alpha radiation. Alpha radiation is very simple. Only if the nucleus is very massive, the excess of mass is liberated as a particle with two protons and two neutrons. This particle is named as alpha radiation. And this is a way to stabilize a little bit the nucleus. Another way to produce radiation from the nucleus is named beta radiation. Beta radiation liberates an electron or anti-electron. Most of the radiation therapy of the last century were made with cobalt-60 and that is a source of beta radiation, for example. But beta radiation is normally together with gamma radiation. Gamma radiation is another kind of radiation, is pure energy without massive particles, instead with photons. In this graph you can see all the ways as the nucleus could produce radiation. So there are some variations in beta radiation and in gamma radiation. We are going to study deep in next videos. But as a summary, we can have in this image the source, in this case the nucleus, the different kind of radiation and the different kind of materials, life materials like plants, people or crystals detectors for materials for construction or electronic materials and every atom in the universe so every atom of the universe could be a material to interact with radiation every atom could produce radiation every atom could interact with radiation Radiation is normally subatomic particles, including photons, because as you know, photons could be considered as particles or as waves. So, thanks for your attention. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to continue this series related with radiation physics and radiation dosimetry. Thanks again for your attention and see you soon.